Hello, and welcome back to the Test Drive Podcast, brought to you by Sport Car USA. I'm your host, Lee Bodette. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Lee Bodette, and here we are with another edition of Test Drive. It's our Test Drive podcast on a weekly basis. This is number 46, and we're going to have another edition of In the Rear View. I've been a radio broadcaster for over 40 years, the spokesperson for Sport Car USA, and, of course, a car enthusiast my entire life. So today, we're going to talk about the legend of Lee Iacocca. Lee Iacocca is by far one of the most well-known executives in the car world and made some of the biggest impacts on the car industry as we know it today. From Ford to Chrysler, he made improvements to the way car companies work. He is most famous for his contributions to the Ford Mustang, Pinto, and Continental Mark III. Lee was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania on October 15, 1924. Allentown, when it was founded, was a major hub for early industrial America. The major source of economy in the area was centered around manufacturing. Starting in the late 20th century, the now-growing city moved away from strictly manufacturing due to a decline in heavy industry needs. Iacocca, being born in a once-booming industrial city, was the perfect setup for him to have a future in a similar field. His parents were Nicola Iacocca and Antonetta Parada, both Italian-Americans. He grew up around hard workers, as some of his family owned and operated restaurants in the area. The restaurants would go on to be very successful and expand further. These sort of things taught Iacocca an incredible work ethic and drive. He would go on to graduate with honors from Allentown High School in 1942. After completing high school, he would go on to attend the local Lehigh University in the neighboring town of Bethlehem. Lee would get a degree in industrial engineering and be a part of Tau Beta Pi, which was the Engineering Honor Society. After finishing his undergraduate degree, Lee would go on to attend Princeton University to pursue a master's degree in mechanical engineering. He won the Wallace Memorial Fellowship as well. The Wallace Memorial Fellowship was founded in 1930 by the bequest of Bonnie Wallace LeClear and reconstituted in 1963 as the highest award given to graduate students in the School of Engineering and Applied Science. In 1946, Iacocca started his career at Ford Motor Company. He would start out as an engineer before growing in the company. He was an engineer for a very short time before he wanted to be moved into a different department. He asked to be moved into sales and marketing. This was an amazing fit, and his career really took off from there. He stayed close to home and worked in the Philadelphia market as an assistant sales manager. This is where he found some of his most early and well-known success. The 56 for 56 campaign was for loans on 1956 model year vehicles with a 20% down payment and a $56 in monthly payments for three years. This promotion vaulted Lee Iacocca through the ranks of Ford. The promotion got so much national traction that he was called into the headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan. Once there, he would climb through the ranks and on November 10th, 1960, was named vice president and general manager of the Ford division. After this, he would be named the vice president of the car and truck group in 1965, and in 1967 would be named the executive vice president. In December of 1970, Lee Iacocca would become the president of Ford Motor Company. Lee Iacocca was responsible for many popular Ford models. The ones that he is most known for, the 1965 Ford Mustang, Continental Mark III, and the Ford Escort. He was also heavily involved in the revival of the Mercury brand in the 60s. The two Mercury models that he was involved with were the Cougar and Marquis. He also pitched some other models that didn't end up getting picked up by Ford. Those cars would go on to be taken in by Chrysler, the K car and minivan. The 1965 Mustang was headed by both Iacocca and his assistant GM and chief engineer Donald Frey. The T5 project, as it was called, was the early iterations of the Mustang. The car was developed in about 18 months, which is a very fast turnaround. Iacocca was a big part in pushing the project to Ford. The first Mustang had a V4 engine and wasn't a powerhouse like we associate the name with today. The car started as a mere concept in 1962 and as a two-seat option. It then evolved into the new concept in 1963 with a rear seat added. April 14, 1964 was the first 1965 Mustang sold. It was sold at a Ford dealership in Newfoundland, Canada. The car made its silver screen debut in the 1964 James Bond movie, you remember it, Goldfinger. Now, the Pinto was a big development that was said to be led strongly by Iacocca. 
The Pinto would be a brand new vehicle for Ford that would be built from the ground up. The idea behind the Pinto was to start making a much more fuel efficient vehicle. The goal of the project would be to build a car that weighed less than 2,000 pounds and cost less than $2,000. That translates to around $18,000 in today's economy. The Pinto entered production in 1971 and would be a cheaper option for Ford. Ford was a dominant force in racing, and Iacocca wanted them to get back into it. He was able to convince Henry Ford II to get back on the track, and they would end up winning several races in NASCAR, the Indy 500, and 24 hours of Le Mans. With all these things he was doing, you'd think it was all going well. That wouldn't be the case for Lee Iacocca, though. He was eventually promoted to the president of Ford Motor Company in 1970. This wouldn't last forever because he and Henry Ford II did not get along. When he was fired in 1978, it could be said that it was for personal reasons. He was fired after the company posted a $2 billion profit that year. This wouldn't be the end of Iacocca in the car industry, however. He would move on to make the move to Chrysler in 1978. When Iacocca joined Chrysler in 1978, the company was in really bad financial shape. Chrysler was on the verge of going out of business, and Lee Iacocca aimed to save them. The main reason that Chrysler was in such bad shape is because of the large recalls they had on the Dodge Aspen and Plymouth Volari. Iacocca quickly identified that these were the reasons for the money loss and customer discontent. He would have to start from the ground up to rebuild the company and called on some friends from Ford to come on over and join him. When Iacocca arrived, Chrysler had two new units that were hitting the streets, the Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon. They were instant hits and sold over 300,000 units each in their first year. This was one of the first times that American and European cars started to look similar or the same on the exterior. The Dodge Omni was a derivative of the European Chrysler Horizon. The main difference between the cars was everything on the inside. American versions used a Volkswagen engine, and Euro versions used a Simca engine. They also had differences in transmissions, interior, suspensions, and bumpers. In 1979, Chrysler had hit a new low. They now were in desperate need of money and had to reach out to the United States Congress. Chrysler would request a loan guarantee in attempt to save the company. Chrysler CEO John Ricardo resigned in 1979 because he was hoping the government would be more likely to give the bailout with new management. Lee Iacocca was able to get the money, but Chrysler would have to cut costs and abandon some of its current projects. The biggest project that never got to be finished was the production of a turbine engine that was almost 20 years in production. In 1981, Chrysler released their very first K car. The Dodge Aries and Plymouth Reliant were the first two units that Chrysler was going to make in that category. Both of these designs were designs that Ford had rejected when Iacocca was working there. They would go on to be a huge success for Chrysler in reviving their company. These cars were released in the middle of recession, and the small, fuel-efficient, inexpensive vehicles sold like hotcakes. Around the same time, Iacocca would introduce the world to the minivan. This family-oriented vehicle was brought to the world in 1983. This van would go on to lead the automotive industry in sales for 25 years. All the changes that Lee Iacocca made would quickly turn Chrysler around and get them moving in the right direction. They were able to repay the government seven years earlier than they had expected and were well on their way to making even more improvements. In 1987, Iacocca would push for Chrysler to buy another car company, AMC. Iacocca wanted to acquire AMC so he could get the design rights to the Jeep Grand Cherokee. AMC had already done most of the work for the Grand Cherokee by the time the 1987 acquisition took place. Jeep brand was rolled into Chrysler. They would start making money hand over fist. The Grand Cherokee would be in production and finally released in 1992. Iacocca would retire in that very same year. Lee Iacocca is widely recognized for his dynamic leadership style and innovative management philosophy. Serving as the president and later CEO of both Ford Motor Company and Chrysler Corporation, Iacocca left a lasting mark on the automotive industry and beyond. His leadership style was characterized by a combination of boldness, vision, and common sense, which propelled him to success during times of crisis and transformation. One of the hallmarks of Iacocca's leadership style was his ability to inspire and motivate teams. 
He had a charismatic personality and was known for his strong communication skills, which allowed him to effectively convey his vision and rally people around common goals. Whether addressing employees, shareholders, or the public, Iacocca had a knack for connecting with his audience and instilling confidence in his leadership. In addition to his charisma, Iacocca was a strategic thinker with a keen business mind. He understood the importance of innovation and was willing to take risk to drive growth and profitability. One of his most notable achievements was securing a federal loan guarantee for Chrysler back in 1979, which enabled the company to avoid bankruptcy and stage a remarkable turnaround. Iacocca's bold decision-making during the crisis demonstrated his willingness to confront challenges head-on and his ability to navigate complex situations and come out on top. More than anything, Iacocca believed in the power of teamwork and collaboration. He fostered a culture of openness and transparency within his organizations, encouraging employees to contribute their ideas and perspectives. He valued diversity and believed that a diverse workforce was essential for driving innovation and staying competitive in a rapidly changing world. At the same time, Iacocca was not afraid to make tough decisions or hold people accountable when necessary. He was known for his no-nonsense approach to management and his willingness to challenge the status quo. Under his leadership, both Ford and Chrysler underwent significant restructuring efforts aimed at streamlining operations, reducing costs, and improving efficiency. Overall, Lee Iacocca's leadership style and management philosophy were characterized by a rare combination of charisma, strategic vision, and operational excellence. He was a transformative figure in the automotive industry and a role model for aspiring leaders across various sectors. His legacy continues to inspire countless individuals to this very day, reminding us of the power of bold leadership and the importance of perseverance in the face of adversity. Lee Iacocca's legacy in the automotive industry is very vast and is marked by his significant contributions to the success and evolution of two of America's most iconic car manufacturers, that being Ford and Chrysler. Throughout his impressive career, Iacocca left a mark on the industry, shaping its trajectory and influenced generations of automotive executives and enthusiasts. Beyond his tenure at Chrysler, Iacocca's impact on the automotive industry is also evident during his time at Ford Motor Company. His leadership and marketing expertise helped transform the Mustang into a classic, cementing its status as one of the most beloved vehicles in the automotive history. He was an advocate for innovation and technological advancement in the automotive industry, championing initiatives such as fuel efficiency and vehicle safety. His emphasis on quality and consumer satisfaction set new standards for the industry, shaping the way automakers design, manufacture, and market their vehicles. Iacocca was actively involved in various charitable endeavors as well, including the establishment of the Iacocca Family Foundation, which funds research into diabetes and other chronic diseases. His dedication to giving back to his community and making a positive impact on society serves as a testament to his values and principles as a leader. Lee Iacocca's legacy in the automotive industry is one of innovation, resilience, and leadership. His visionary approach to business, coupled with his ability to navigate through adversity, continues to inspire future generations of leaders and shape the trajectory of the automotive industry. As an icon and pioneer, Iacocca's contributions will be remembered and celebrated for years to come. While Lee Iacocca is widely celebrated for his accomplishments and contributions to the automotive industry, his career was not without its share of criticisms and controversies. Despite his successes, certain decisions during his tenure at Ford and Chrysler raised questions about his abilities. One of the most notable controversies surrounding Iacocca was his handling of the Ford Pinto safety scandal back in the 1970s. During his time as president of Ford, the company faced allegations that it had prioritized cost-cutting over safety in the design and production of the Ford Pinto compact car. It was revealed that Ford knew about potential safety defects in the Pinto's fuel system, which could lead to fires in rear-end collisions, yet opted not to make design changes to address these issues. This controversy tarnished Ford's reputation and led to costly legal battles, raising concerns about corporate ethics and accountability. 
In conclusion, the legend of Lee Iacocca is one of remarkable achievements, innovative leadership, and a major impact on the automotive industry. From his early days at Ford to his revolutionary time spent at Chrysler, Iacocca left quite the mark on car manufacturers. His visionary approach to business, coupled with his bold decision-making and charismatic leadership style, propelled him to success during times of crisis and transformation. Throughout his career, Iacocca introduced groundbreaking vehicles, such as the Ford Mustang and the Chrysler minivan. Those vehicles reshaped the automotive landscape and set new standards for innovation and customer satisfaction. His commitment to quality, innovation, and customer centricity revolutionized the way automakers design, manufacture, and market their vehicles. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our Test Drive podcast number 46, our special segment today in the rear view on our Test Drive podcast. We hope that you enjoyed it. Lee Iacocca, man, I got to tell you, he was an amazing man and had so much influence on car manufacturers to this very day. We'll see you next week for our Test Drive podcast number 47. And remember, let's never forget the men and women serving this great country of ours. I'm Lee Bodette. Goodbye, everybody.